What's going on, guys? Um, get in front of the camera here and tell you what I'm working on. In my 30 gallon tank, I've got it set up for plants running T5 HOs, and um, I've got topsoil, you know, organic topsoil in the bottom of the tank for planting soil. So lately, I've been thinking about putting a DIY CO2 system on my tank. But the part I was struggling with is how to bond the water and the CO2 together. Uh, there's a lot of options out there. Some people use air stones. Um, they put them at the end of the CO2 line. They put them in the kind of down close to the bottom of the tank and they just let it bubble and how much ever is absorbed by the water before it hits the top is what happens. Some uses a diffuser um, that, you know, uh, I believe uh, Tashio Mono uh, created him. I uh, hope I didn't murder his name. Then there's, uh, there's reactors um, that use like a power head and some sponge filters and what happens is the then they use like the end of a siphon and as the as the power head pulls in water the DIY, the DIY CO2 lines already in there it's got a little air stone head and it, it just keeps um, tumbling the water over and over until it's breaking up and it's dissolved the CO2 is dissolved into the water then there, um, there's also reactors, larger reactors, that go outside of the tank. And uh, after, like I said, after thinking about it for quite a while, that's what I've decided to do. So, right now I've got one in the 30. I forgot to grab the camera and record me building it, which I wish I'd had. Because um, I've now noticed some issues that I'd like to correct before... I'll probably build another one for the 30, and then at some point I'll be building one for my 225. Some of the issues that we did correct, 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 sorry I can't speak today, we corrected some of them when we built um, Jacobs, uh, we built him one last week I believe it was, in his 55, um, and then I've recently thought of another issue. Um, one of the things that we came up with was we wanted to be able to take the big part of it out so we could clean it. Um, I'll show you a short video or I'll, I'll go show what I have. But the clear big cylinder that the water you know, and the CO2 are mixed in, we wanted to be able to clean that. So we wanted to be able to take it off. Well, what I was at first thinking is just, you know, basically have two parts it can unscrew from. Well, I wasn't thinking, if you're on, if you got one, say this is your big tube, if you're, your one screw part's here, and then the other one's down here at the bottom, and you start turning it like this, this part's going to get loose, this part's going to tighten. So you can't do that. What you have to use is a union. Um, it can be a union ball valve or just a, just a union. Uh, what a union is, is it has a nut that unscrews and the two pieces of pipe pull together. Um, so, you know, it can release. You have either one or two of them, depending on whatever you, however you want. But you have to have a union in there. So, we fixed his up. His got a union on it. Now he can un take it apart clean it. Um, he's also got bio balls in the, uh, the big tube. I do not. So, you know, we'll see how that works right now. Um, but the other thing I realized is um, you need to, the plan is for mine is at night for it to shut off and then the air pump come on to balance out the, you know, so the pH doesn't get out of whack by running it all night. Um, by using this method, basically you have a 100% um, bond rate of the CO2 you're pumping in. 
So, you know, if you're pumping uh, one or two bubbles a second, that all is going to be turned into CO2 for your plants to use in the water. So at, by the end of the day, you're going to have a lot of CO2 built up in that water. If it keeps pumping all night, when the plants start releasing CO2, then you ha run the risk of um, basically too much CO2 going on in your tank. So we have this system. Um, like I said, I want to be able to shut mine off at night. Well, what happens when I shut it off, the CO2 keeps getting pumped into that reactor. And after a while, it would the CO2 would start pushing, you know, water back out. Um, so what needs to happen is a backflow valve actually on your your water, um, so it can't push it back into the tank. So the first when it turns on in the morning, the CO2 that's built up overnight will be still in your reactor, and it will be able to be still utilized in your tank. Um, it just builds up in that reactor and when the water comes on it just starts you know absorbing into the water. So that's one of the next things that I've got to build one with that uh, in there. The, uh, the backflow water valve. So when I rebuild one I'll include that in there. But the other problem I was having is, a lot of people said this, is when you go to um, use a pop bottle, you're also going to have an issue about getting, getting a good seal on the cap to whatever hose you use. Well, the hose I'm using is a polyethylene um, irrigation quarter inch tube. It's a uh, it's very hot, heavy duty. Um, it it's a lot thicker than your typical air line like you see in the aquarium industry used. But um, still, there's the problem of connecting it to that bottle cap. A bottle cap is also made out of polyethylene. So using a typical like super glue or sealant isn't going to work. The uh, the super glue won't bond to the uh, cap right and the sealant over time will break apart, break down um, from the, uh, the CO2 coming up uh, contact it. So what I did is, um, let me see right here, it's hard to see. One of my uh, jobs is dealing with irrigation. So. I'm always seeing irrigation parts that can be used in our system. But here's what I used. And what that is, is a little quarter inch barb that connects a quarter inch line to a half inch line in the ir irrigation industry. So, it, you know, you can just push that into your half inch, your quarter inch pushes onto it, it's got a little barb fitting so it can't push back off. And um, that's what we used to connect our quarter inch line. Well, still yet, you've got to get it into your bottle cap like that. So, you know, you puncture a hole and you push that part into the cap. Well, still yet, there's no bond. Well, in the irrigation industry, again, we use a chemical base um, glue that instead of just creating a, a glue like it just basically seals off or whatever it's pushed up against it tries to create a I can't even think the right word but anyway what this glue does is it melts the the plastic or in this case the polyethylene it melts it it creates a chemical reaction and melts the two pieces together and seals them back. So what we've got here is I've got glue on top of that and so what that's done it's melted these two pieces the bottle cap and that little barb fitting together so when you go to change out your CO2 bottle you just unscrew this take it into your kitchen bathroom wherever you read and do the mix and leave this connected to your quarter inch line 
and that'll stay together that bond won't be broken right there so that's my theory um, it should work I mean you know like I said this is used in the irrigation industry all the time and the plumbing industry all over um, it's how they put PVC pipes together and polyethylene pipes to PVC uh, whatever um, so that bond should you know be solid you know I can't pull these two parts apart um, after this fully sets up because uh, it will literally break apart so that's what I've got but I'll take you uh, take you into the 30 show you what I'm talking about of my reactor and uh, I've also got another pump coming in right now I am using a power head but I'm actually going to switch it over to an exterior interior pump um, that does about I think it's somewhere between 250 gallons and 300 gallons per hour so you know um, pushing a lot of water through it but I like a lot of flow some people don't but I'll take you in there show you what I got all right on this view it's a little hard to see but that's the that power head right there it's stuck to the back of the tank and then um, right here you can see the tube coming from the power head it comes basically right up through there and then right there is the uh, the return from the reactor it's a uh, it's basically it's a T but it's also a 90 it's got two outports and I know that it's not the way to explain it but it's a uh, it's a funky piece only Lowe's sells those things um, if you go to an irrigation store or a plumbing store most likely they will not have them um, they're they're not really that great of a deal but I figured it'd be great because it splits the uh, pipe into two and it'd be nice for the return but anyways so what I have is the pipe comes in it goes down it's got a ball valve on it so I can turn it off then it's got a T and that's the line that goes back to my my DIY yeast bottle check valve to keep it water from going back through it then it goes down goes into this four inch clear plastic pipe it comes back out goes another ball valve and then that is the return line going back up to here so that's how I'm mixing my CO2 then the other thing I have is there's my DIY CO2 bottle which I need to uh, redo the mix today it comes up and I've already got one of these on here but like I said I wasn't able to uh, or I wasn't thinking about using the glue when I put this in so I just pushed it in it's actually pretty tight without um, the glue but I know over time it will start leaking so I wanted to prevent that goes to another check valve and then I created this it's a bar fitting goes into a piece of half inch there is water in there depends which way you tip it you can see the edge of the water and so it's basically a bubble counter and then it goes back out that goes up to your reactor so so far I've had this on here uh, a little bit over two weeks maybe and um, actually yeah it's a basically been about three weeks that I've had this on here plants are showing a lot of growth um, even my uh, glosso is starting to uh, put up more leaves uh, stuff's been purling maybe not as much as I expected so today I'm going to, like I said, mix up another bottle and then probably in another, I'll probably do 10 days and I'll mix another bottle and then I'll change them out every 20 days. So, you know, every 10 days I'll be changing a bottle out but I'll have two bottles on the tank. So, we'll see how that goes. I, uh, you know, I've also got some a lot of slow growing plants in here. That could be another reason I'm not seeing a lot of uh, change, but 
that's what I'm doing guys but I just want to show you like I said I'll do another video of actually building one of the reactors once I, I'm just trying to fine-tune everything and get it figured out but when I do it on the big tank I'll record it all put it up on the line and let you guys see it but I just kind of wanted to give us little briefing of what I am doing so we'll talk to you guys later have a good one